All right, these are the notes for chapter one, section six, um, the multiplication of integers. We kind of did an introductory activity on this uh, Friday, if you were here for the quiz, to where we learned some basic things. And what we really learned, what it was all about, was uh, that we took our addition properties and just kind of adjusted a little bit. In addition, subtraction of integers, it was if the signs are the same, we add. If the signs are different, we subtract. We kind of use the same thing and what we learned on Friday was if the signs are the same your answer is positive if the signs are different then your answer is negative and so looking at this uh, I don't think we need to use chapter or the first example because I think we can move through this the first thing you do is you recognize that you are doing 7 times 9 which is 63 and then what you do is you say the signs are different which means your sign is going to be negative and your answer is negative 63 Remember that whenever we do our computation, we do our computation without any signs at all. The only signs we can use are plus, minus, divided by, and times. And so notice that all I did was 7 times 9. I didn't do 7 times negative 9, which is where a lot of you lose points on your quiz by writing that down. Uh, on number 15, we have negative 1 ninth times negative 3 fourths. First thing we have to do is recognize that we are simply going to be doing one ninth times three fourths, which is the actual um, ig ignoring of the signs. Remember that when you multiply fractions, you go across the top. One times three is three. Nine times four is thirty-six. Uh, three over thirty-six, I believe, can both be divided by three. So let me see what thirty-six divided by three is. It gives me twelve. So what you end up with is one twelfth. But you have to remember here that after you get your answer, you still have to consider the sign. In this situation, the signs are the same, which means that it should be positive. And so my answer is positive 1 12th. Again, the work you're going to show me today is going to be this part. This is what gets you your credit whenever you turn this stuff in. So please make sure you're at least showing me the operational work for the number and then simply putting the sign on it. Do not just try to use the calculator to use negatives and all that because it's going to uh, cost you some things at the end of the week. Next number we're going to look at is number 19. 19 has negative 1.2 squared. We have to remember that squared means take whatever's here and multiply it by itself which makes negative 1.2 times negative 1.2. Now what makes this tricky is that when most people see this they think it's negative something. But you have to remember here, yes, that even though we are doing 1.2 times 1.2, that the signs are the same. And in this case, that makes it a positive answer. So 1.2 times 1.2 is going to be 1.44. And because it's positive, that represents the answer that you should have. Okay. So what we learned again Friday is that when it comes to multiplication and division, same sign is positive different sign is negative. What we learned a while ago is how to do the square roots of numbers and then this is going to take it a step further and put some symbols on the outside which isn't really so bad when you see it on your uh, math XL today. 23 gives me the question negative square root of 900 which is something we've kind of seen but never really seen so let's look at problem 2 and just see what goes on. Looking at the question, looking at the answer, keep in mind that to do a square root uh, it's second x squared 25 I think on your calculators on the computer you simply hit 5 in the square root key but just play around with that to make sure uh, when you get to math XL but notice the square root of 25 is 5 and the answer they have here is negative 5 it seems like all they did is simply take the sign over same thing here you have 4 over 49 remember 4 over 49 you're supposed to split that here square root of 4 ends up being 2 square root of 49 equals 7 and it looks to me like all they did was take what we call the plus or minus symbol and carry it over there. So to me, all we have to do is take the square root and carry the sign. So for 23, we have something just as simple as do the square root of 900 first, which is 30. Just make sure you carry the sign down with it to get negative 30. Same situation with 29, you have plus or minus 0.25 first thing you want to do is take the square root of 0 0.25 which is 0 0.5 just don't forget to bring the sign down because that's really all that they're doing there is just bringing the sign down with your final answer to make sure that everything is the way it should be alright 
So keep that in mind when you see that on your Math XL. I think that if you at least fight for your 100% grade, you'll get it eventually and that you'll actually come out better because the more you make mistakes in math before it counts, the better off you do when it does count. So um, number 32 gives us negative 39 divided by negative 13. I told you again, multiplication and division rules are the same. The first thing you want to do is ignore the signs and do 39 divided by 13. which is 3. The second thing we have to do is look at the signs and say hey the signs are the same which means it's going to be positive so our answer is positive 3. Very simple, very direct, easy enough to do. Uh, 33 gives us 63 over negative 21. This question remember is a division problem. It is pretty much 63 divided by 21 which ends up also being 3. But in this situation, uh, the signs are different. And because the signs are different, it means that my sign is negative. And so in this case, your answer is negative 3. When you multiply, when you divide, apply the rule. If the signs are the same, your answer is negative. If the signs are different, your answer is positive. And the last type of question you're going to see, or last types of questions you're going to see, is going to have to do with dividing fractions, which is probably the only thing we have not really done in here yet in terms of fractions. So it's good to kind of get this out of the way and wrap up all of our introduction. Uh, number four gives us f negative five divided by negative five thirds. Now, again, this is something I haven't seen before. So let's look at this example and see what they do in problem four in the book. It says, what's the value of x over y, which we don't really see it that way, but it says x equals negative 3 fourths, y equals negative 2 thirds. It tells us to rewrite the expression. Notice the first thing they did was they wrote it in the form that it makes sense to us in, which is instead of writing it as a fraction, they use the division symbol. Then they substitute it. They turn x into negative 3 fourths. They turn y into negative 2 thirds. The next step, it says multiply by the reciprocal. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but a lot of teachers, whenever they do this, they teach the phrase. It looks like they keep the first one. They change the sign. And they flip the second fraction. Uh, I, just, I mean, they just say keep, change, flip, which helps you remember how to multiply it. So kind of I would write that down in your notes because there are going to be some division problems in your work today. And after that, you simply do the multiplication the way you normally would. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. Both of these signs are the same, so it's a positive 9 eighths. So keep, change, flip seems to be the key part there. Again, you might want to leave a note for that some, somewhere in your uh, writing so you know what to do when you see it. So going back to 41, really negative 5 isn't a fraction, so it's kind of tough to deal with. Keep in mind you can turn a number into a fraction by simply putting it over 1. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is keep, change, flip, which means keep the first one the same, so negative 5 over 1, change the division into a multiplication, and flip negative 5 thirds to be negative 3 fifths. After that, we multiply across the top, which is 15, we multiply across the bottom, which is 5. We pay attention to the signs. Here the signs are the same, which makes it positive, and so we end up with a positive 3 is our answer when we reduce that. It's really not so bad once you understand how to do the keep change flip on your fraction because it just kind of takes you right to where you want to be. And then 45 gives us x over y. Um, and 45 gives us x is negative 5, 6. Again, notice what the notes did. The first thing they did was they wrote it as x divided by y, which is smart. And then they went from there. If I turn my x into negative 5, 6 like this says to do, divided by I turn my y into three-fifths. Now I have some things to take care of. Again, this is a division. I don't know how, we really don't know how to divide fractions, but we do know how to keep, change, flip, making it into a multiplication problem. So we keep the first one the same as negative five-sixths. We change division into multiplication. We flip the fraction into five-thirds, and we do what we would normally do, which is to multiply across the top, which is 25, multiply across the bottom, which is 18, check out the signs and notice that they are different which means that my sign would be negative. 
So first off, make sure you raise your hand. Let me see these notes so you can get your participation points for the day. Uh, and then go ahead and log on to Math XL, and you would be doing Chapter 1.6A on that work to make sure you start getting that grade. Uh, keep in mind that your overall weekly grade for the computer is what you have on all your quizzes, so allowing yourself to do badly is going to hurt your grade in the end of the week, so make sure you do your best on that. And if you do make mistakes, try your best to get back in here and, and uh, try them again so your grade can get higher.